Japan is open to the world once again. And I couldn't be happier for everyone that has waited for years to visit Tokyo, Kyoto, and other famous cities in Japan. But while I am happy, I've noticed a lot of people going to the typical tourist hotspots that have been labeled as the most famous places to go in Tokyo. If you do a Google search of the best places to go, dozens of travel websites advertise the same 10 to 12 places in Tokyo, like Shibuya, Shinjuku, and several other places. And most of them are actually decent spots to visit. But there are a few places that appear on this travel list that either don't live up to the hype, are overpriced, or are just straight up tourist traps. So today, I'm going to cover the six most overrated places to go in Tokyo. Whoa, wait a minute there. Before you get the torches and pitchforks out because I bash one of your favorite spots, let me explain. Like any good Tokyo tour guide, with each overrated spot, I will provide one or many alternative solutions that are not only better than its overrated counterpart, but also much less crowded with other tourists, allowing you to have a more immersive experience while still enjoying Tokyo. For example, did you know that there's an observatory that goes almost as high as Tokyo Sky Tree, but is also free and almost has no line? Well, <coughs> spoiler alert, there is. Stick around to find out where that free alternative is. All right, are those torches and pitchforks away now? Okay, good. Then without further ado, let's get into the list. Coming in at number six is Golden Gae. This place is advertised as a wondrous network of alleyways that house dozens of unique drinking spots, making friends with the locals, and having a good time with all your traveling partners. And some of this is true. There are definitely unique drinking spots. However, while these bars are pretty interesting, the cost to enter most of them is simply not worth it. Because all of the bars are so small, the majority of them have a really expensive cover charge. And once you enter, the drinks are pretty pricey as well. Aside from being overpriced, it is also a popular tourist destination, which means you're more likely to just run into another tourist than a Tokyo local. If you want great food and drinks while meeting actual locals, then head to a Yokocho instead, like this new one, which is only a five minute walk from Golden Guy. This nearby Yokocho is called Ryo no Miyako in Shiokogai, otherwise known as Shinjuku Yokocho. For those of you who haven't seen my last video, which you should if you haven't, a Yokocho is a type of food hall that has dozens of mini restaurants crammed into a small building. And with great food, you better believe it's gonna have great drinks to choose from as well. Combining the food, drinks, and energetic crowd together produces one of the most exciting environments you can find in Tokyo. And Shinjuku's new Yokocho is no exception. With its vibrant lights, 17 different restaurants to choose from and a great atmosphere, you are sure to have a great time and have a lot of fun with everyone around you. Here's the best part about Yokochos. Unlike Golden Gai, this Yokocho isn't the only one. You can find them throughout all of Tokyo with a simple Google search. But I've also linked a few of my favorites in the description box below. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. For number five, we have the famous Ichiran Ramen Restaurant. And yes, I call it a ramen restaurant, not a shop, which I'll get to why in a bit. Ichiran is famously known by any Japan traveler as one of the best places you can go for some ramen. But before I go any further, I can confidently say I'm one of the biggest fans of ramen. Throughout my years living here, I have tried dozens of different ramen and noodle shops. And to this day, I still eat ramen about two to three times a week. Not the best thing for my health, but hey, it's still worth it. I say all of this because when I say Ichiran is overrated, I don't mean it's all that bad. It's it's actually a decent bowl of ramen. So if you really want to give it a try and check it off your to-do list, go ahead. However, I would recommend only going there once and then move on to all the better shops in Tokyo. Because as I mentioned before, while it's a decent bowl of ramen, it's just that, a decent bowl of ramen. Nothing sticks out to me about the flavor that would make it a great bowl of ramen and is more or less a forgettable experience. And when you're trying to make great memories about Tokyo, you want to make sure you have as many unforgettable experiences experiences as possible. Speaking of experience, Ichiran isn't your typical ramen experience, with huge rows of seats and tiny walls to separate each seat, making you feel like you're isolated in your little cubicle. At a real ramen shop, the seating area is always open-ended, with a direct connection with the person serving you and other patrons enjoying the same meal. Along with this, what makes a ramen shop a, well, shop? 
is the one or two rows of seats, giving you a more exclusive and personal connection with the shop. And you can really immerse yourself in what makes an authentic ramen shop so special. As for alternatives, don't worry. I have several recommended ramen shops I have discovered in Tokyo. Check the description below for some of my recommended spots. Number four, Akihabara. Akihabara has long been known as Tokyo's electric city. This part of Tokyo was known for its multi-floor arcades, its anime or otaku scene, and all the electronic shops that sold cutting edge technology. While that reputation of Akihabara held true 20 years ago, the introduction of cheap online shopping, as well as other arcades and otaku shops opening up all over Tokyo, has caused that reputation to steadily decline over time. To make things worse, the tragic COVID pandemic only accelerated its decline, with many of its already struggling arcades and shops finally shuttering for good. And even though the night view is still impressive, the majority of what made Akihabara unique can now just be found all over Tokyo. But don't worry, I know a perfect spot to get all of this and much more, all packed into one convenient location. If you still want to check out the otaku scene, check out Nakano Broadway. Located in the heart of Sun City Mall at Nakano Station, Nakano Broadway has the same to offer as Akihabara and much more. Nakano Broadway has plenty of otaku shops, arcades, and even quirky cosplay shops spread throughout the basement, first, second, and third floors. You can get your fix of manga, action figures, and expensive trading cards at the Mandarake store, which takes up almost the entire third floor. The second floor has more retro otaku items, gacha pawn machines, and even a cosplay store. And on the first floor, they have an arcade which is very similar to what you would find in Akihabara. This place has it all in one convenient location. But as I already mentioned, Nakano Broadway goes a step further than Akihabara, with dozens of restaurants conveniently located in the adjacent Sun City Mall. They even have a nightlife scene nearby, which you could spend all night exploring. Not only is all of this conveniently packed together in just a few blocks, but there are almost no tourists here too. While everyone is busy checking out all the tourist hotspots, you could come here instead and really immerse yourself in the environment, while still getting everything you were expecting from Akihabara. Number three, Tokyo Skytree. Next up is one of the more obvious overrated places on this list, but still needs to be mentioned because I have so many great alternatives. So let's start off with the good. The building itself is very sleek, with the top observatory reaching an impressive 450 meters high. When you get to the top, it offers a pretty decent view of the city, whether it be day or night. Okay, now for the bad. It's way overpriced. Getting to the lower observatory, which is 350 meters high, is a pricey 2100 yen. And if you want to go even higher to the top observatory, it costs a staggering 50% more. And if you're traveling in a group or family, this can quickly stack up to an expensive experience. Along with the pricey entrance fee, the line to enter Skytree can be extremely long. We went to Skytree on a weeknight to avoid the long lines, but if you look here, you can clearly see how long these lines can get. I even had a subscriber mention to me that it took him almost two hours of waiting just to get in the elevator to the top. Insane! Instead of going to Skytree, check out Shibuya Sky, where you can get a much cooler view of Tokyo's skyline. Shibuya Sky has a huge open air rooftop, giving you much more room to walk around and explore, check out Tokyo's skyline, and relax. And if you want to save money, did you know there's a place where you can get a view of Tokyo's skyline for free? Well, there is. This place is known as the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. For being just a seven minute walk from Shinjuku Station, it is a pretty well hidden secret. The lines are usually not that bad, so there's no need to reserve in advance. Even better, this place has two observatories, which both go almost as high as Tokyo Skytree. And I'll say it one more time, it's free. You know what else is free? Hitting that like and subscribe button, which I would really appreciate. So next time you're in Shinjuku, you've gotta check this hidden gem out. Harajuku itself has some pretty nice areas to visit, like Yoyogi Park, Meiji Shrine, or an all-you-can-eat dessert shop, which you can check out in my other video. However, of all these different spots in Harajuku, there is one that is not like the others. Takashida Street. This street has always been advertised as the bold, yet trendy fashion central of Tokyo, with cosplayers and trend centers walking up and down the streets at all times. However, like Akihabara, Takashida Street is just a former shell of its old reputation. Instead of cosplayers and trendsetters lining the streets, it is now packed 
packed full of tourists, trying to get a glimpse of all these people who moved on to other places long ago. There are still various quirky and cosplay stores that you can check out, but like Akihabara, many of these stores can now be found in other parts of Tokyo, like Shibuya's 109 Mall, any Don Quixote, or the already mentioned Nakano Broadway. But there is another spot that I have already mentioned in one of my previous videos as the hidden Harajuku of Tokyo. That's right, it's none other than Shimokitazawa. In Shimokitazawa, there are dozens of trendy clothing shops and several great restaurants to choose from, like this amazing pizza shop. If you've ever wanted pizza that's similar to America's best, then this place is a must visit. Best of all, Shimokitazawa is famous for its live underground music scene. This stairwell or bar might look like an unassuming spot with nothing special about it, but down these stairs and through these doors are underground venues home to some of the most energetic and amazing live bands I have ever seen. So if you want to enjoy the trendy side of Tokyo and not be let down, then head to Shimokitazawa for a day to remember. Let me know if you get that reference in the comments below. And taking number one for the most overrated place in Tokyo, it's none other than Tokyo's Imperial Palace. The name gives you the impression that when you actually get to the spot, you will see a majestic castle and will be able to tour the royal grounds. But when you show up, the only parts that are visible is the moat and the stone wall. But surely there's a way to tour the grounds like any other castle in Japan, right? And the answer is nope. The only thing you can actually do here is walk around the garden that's on the outside of the palace. Along with the lack of things to do at the palace, there's not really much to do around the palace as well. The grounds are so massive that you would either need to take a taxi or go to Tokyo Station to find anything nearby. Although there are no real alternative royal grounds to visit in Tokyo, there are several famous shrines, like Meiji Shrine, that provide the same beautiful walk through the park while also giving you something to see at the end of the walk. If you've already been to Meiji, then a nice walk through Yoyogi or Oena Park is always a great option. They almost always have a fun event going on every weekend, so you'll definitely want to check them out if you're in Tokyo on a Saturday or Sunday. If you want to see more hidden things to do in Tokyo, click right here. I'll also be posting all of the places I've mentioned in my videos on a new app called Thatch. And with this app, I can show you all the neat things in Tokyo that I don't have time to cover videos about. Check out my Thatch profile in the link below for more info. Alright, well until next time, I'll see you then.